Hello, welcome back again. I'm videotaping these and I have no idea what order I'm going to put them in, so that makes it more exciting for everybody now, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm Malco Jojo. I'm with the Horror Show blog, and this is our Giallo October offering. Um, I do have notes. I'm not going to put them down. On this episode, again, this is a mature audience podcast, video cast presentation for Halloween, etc. Uh, talking about Giallo films and some of my favorites. And this category is The Violent, and it's definitely for mature people only. I'm going to be showing some trailers from these movies. And the trailers get a little risque uh, because the movies are risque and they're also super violent. And we're going to be talking about all that stuff spoiler free. Uh, and if there are spoilers, I'm going to put up a little spoiler bumper bum, 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 um, to let you know we're talking about spoilers. But with that, let's move on to movie number one, which is Night Train Murders. Good morning, hair guys, sir. Good morning, Margaret. Staying here for Christmas? No, I'm going oh, to Italy with Lisa to stay with her family. That'll be nice. She'll be warmer down there. Sure hope so. Bye. Bye, girls. Have a good Christmas. Bye. Thank you. Same to you. They'll be leaving at 1, and it gets in tomorrow morning at around 7.30. Also, they're coming down by train. Wouldn't it have been easier for them to fly instead? Yes, but I'm so scared when they're flying. And besides, planes are never on time these days. Has Lisa been behaving well? Oh, of course. She's always sweet. She's never behaved badly. Not when she stayed here with us. She's no angel here with us. So this movie is, well, all these movies, there's a, a big violence towards women aspect that I'm not a super fan of. It's funny because I like the scary killer people and I like the mystery behind it and I like the terror behind it. It's very scary stuff. Uh, violence against women is just, it's, uh, I, I much would prefer a, a violence against men thing. We have a lot of that as well in these movies, but it's definitely something that's, um, it's that bipolar, like what is going on thing. Um, uh, and I don't appreciate that part, but a lot of these movies are just good movies. They're good mysteries. They're scary. They're creepy. This Night Train Murders is definitely, it's from 1975 and it is definitely a little mean spirited film, but it's good. Um, the first time I saw it, I actually didn't like it at all. I thought it was crap. <laughs> I was, I talked to somebody else about it and they're like, really? I thought it was a really good movie. And so I was like, well, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I, I missed something. Maybe I should take a look at it again. And after a while, several months, I was like, okay, it was on a three pack. I got, um, Baba Yaga, Night Train Murders and Strip Nude for Your Killer three pack. Fantastic. I rewatched it again and I was like, oh, I kind of get it. I kind of get it. I still don't like the violence against women thing. It's really rapey and gross, but I, I, I get the whole thing. And I also discovered something at the end that I'll pop in later in a little spoiler section that I was like, oh, dude, that's crazy. Um, I didn't catch the first time because by that time, by the end of it, I was like, oh, this end, this end, please just be done. Again, this movie is based on the Virgin Spring tale um, where, uh, 
can I tell about the tale? I'm going to tell about the tale. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Uh, the, the tale uh, involves um, this woman who is is horribly abused by these people, and then the people go and end up at the parents' house, and the parents find out, and boom, boom, boom. It's what uh, Last House on the Left was also based on. The Last House on the Left, I'll probably never watch again. It's fine. Um, definitely don't need a remake of that. Didn't need to see that at all. I got it the first time. That was enough. This is a little more artsy, a little more together, a little more Italian. And I like it. It's 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 interesting. And who is it? It's uh, Macha Merrill. She's gorgeous and also very mean. So she plays along with these mean men doing mean, horrible things and eliciting other people to do mean stuff as well. And you're like, why would you do that? You're another woman. But she is, has her little thing going on. So two girls are heading back home from school uh, around the holidays and they run into two horrible men and a horrible woman and horrible stuff happens. And like with Last House and all these, uh, they, they, what goes around comes around, let's just say that. Interesting film, interesting film. Um, very atmospheric, very, you know, get out of there. Oh no, those are the bad guys kind of thing, but also pretty entertaining. But yeah, if you have a problem with, with too much violence against women, uh, just avoid it because it's, it's in there and it's just very lingering and, yeah. but good film, good film. Not so giallo in the, the giallo glove killer kind of thing, but, uh, storyline. I, th I think I would kind of get in there and the, they, I think they call it Cremini. It's like a crime giallo. So if crime happens and someone has to figure it out, uh, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. So it would fit into that category, I believe. Next we have another, um, Sergio Martino. Again, he did, um, your vice is a locked room, all the colors of the dark, the case of the scorpion's tail, the strange vice of Mrs. War. Um, really like his work here. We have another kind of classic, kind of giallo mass killer kind of thing. What you have here are fragments of tissue found under the fingernails of one of your companions, barbarously murdered in the middle of the night, one week ago. Our scientific analysis has traced them to this foulard, which was used to strangle Carol Peterson. If you have ever seen a scarf like this on any person you can identify, it is your duty to report it either to the police or the university authorities. I might add that no one in Perugia, either man or woman, is safe until this killer is captured and brought to justice. This is, you know, in that category, we have a classic masked killer guy, uh, very creepy. And there's a bunch of ladies at this university and they're being bumped off one by one, and there's a clue of the scarf that comes into play. It's pretty good. It's really violent. It has some violent stuff in there, and a pretty good mystery. Pretty high on my list, but it's funny. The story is fine. People really like it, um, but I think it's really in there as a just violent kind of stalkery thing. And this came out in, like I said, 1973. Friday the 13th did not come out until 1980. And this has a lot of those elements. A lot of these giallo films, like I said before, are what the 80s kind of stalker killer stuff was based on. So you get, uh, you know, Friday the 13th, you get a lot of the same kills in some of the giallo movies that you get in later Friday the 13th offerings. Um, something that comes to mind is the, the spear through the two people in Friday the 13th. There's something similar to that in Bay of Blood, which came out years before. Um, so a lot of these, these directors and these people writing these films at the time were seeing these classic giallo films and saying, huh, I wonder if we could do something like that here. But what they faced was in the 80s, there was kind of a clamping down because they had all these different you know, things going on in England at the time and everything else where people are like, no, it's too violent. You're corrupting everybody. It's like, it's awful. We don't want to see that. So 
in the 70s, you had a lot of these films coming out, and it was all nudity and violence and death destruction. But in the 80s, when people started mimicking that in these slasher films, they were fighting the backlash of a lot of these films that had come out previously, and they were being like poo-pooed, like, no, 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 too violent. Got to cut that, got to cut that, got to cut that, especially in the United States. And it made it for a little different experience, uh, especially when you tried to include nudity and violence at the same time. It was like, no, that's definitely a bad mixture. Enter the bizarre world of the psychosexual mind from Carlo Patti, who brought you Dr. Zhivago. Now... Torso. Yeah, they're not, a movie's not going to do anything. A movie's not going to be like, hey, I wonder if I should go saw off someone's leg today. Torso. 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 It saturates the screen with terror. Torso. Rated R. And, and you know, do horrible things to ladies. That's not the case at all. And people look at me and they go, "Yeah, you like these scary films? How can you watch these gross, scary films? And it's like, well, have you listened to the news recently? Kind of as a nice little, like, dampener for all this horrible stuff that's really happening in the world. I'd rather watch this make-believe crap than the real stuff in the world. So, but that's just me. But yeah, tor Torso's good. Uh, Susie Kendall is in there. Um, the classic. And it's good. It's good good violent one if you're looking for a good violent movie but I think you could do better I think you could do 1982's Pieces Warning What you will see in the movie Pieces cannot be revealed cannot be described cannot even be imagined Now this film <clears throat> unlike Torso and Night Train Murders it's not so mean spirited it's more, you're leaning more into the slashers. Again, this is 82, so it's it's in that realm of, like, these slashers are being made. And you have, like, the unknown killer and stuff, but you have some elements that are just so funny. <laughs> um, within it, uh, there's something that happens. You see a boy murders his family. It's awful. Blood, blood, blood. Murder, murder, murder. Later on, these people are being killed with, like, a... a chainsaw and they're being chased around with this chainsaw but you have these elements of like <laughs> the person's being chased down with a chainsaw chainsaw is not a quiet instrument for this particular case um and so <laughs> it's like <laughs> people screaming and yelling and you're like wouldn't that be heard someone someone hear this and it's happening at a school very weird you get some weird tennis scenes um, you have, uh, who is it? Christopher George and Linda Day George. <laughs> and Linda Day George has like these, these big lines of like, you know, who's doing this, you bastards? And all this kind of stuff. While we were out here fumbling with that music, the lousy bastard was in there killing her! Bastard! 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 It's really funny. Um... You have the guy that played Bluto, um, Paul L. Smith. Um, he, he, did, uh, he was in Bluto and Red Sonja and Dune. He's like this big man, and his whole shtick is like this squinty, like, mm. and so he's doing that the whole time, and it's this total like, like, oh, I bet it's that guy is the killer, and he's like, mm, let me grab my, my gardening shears and doing this kind of stuff, and you're just like, this is awesome, it's so great. And super violent, and with fun little twisty kind of, like, why is this killer doing this thing at the end? Very bizarre, but fun. Definitely worth uh, taking a look at. It's a, it's just even for for Paul Smith's like crazy face work alone. Got to check it out. Fun, fun stuff. Fun, fun, fun. Last one. I said I wasn't going to include these bigger movies. But if you're looking for the violent -y, giallo goodness, whodunit thing, Bay of Blood, Mario Baba, 1971. Years, nine years before Friday the 13th. <laughs> Bay 
Doch manchmal gibt es ein böses Erwachen. Oder auch gar keins. Im Blutrausch des Satans. Ja, yeah, das Lakey Bay Location. And people keep going to it and getting killed. And right out the gate, you are treated to a series of these things that are happening. And you're like, oh, so that's the bad guy. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I guess that's not the bad guy. The whole time you're watching this film, you're like, what is going on? Who's killing all these people? And then more people show up and they get killed and they're killing and their other people are like involved in the killing of the other people that were being killed and they're like, what is going on? Doch dieses Paradies birgt tödliche Gefahren. It's a really gross, gross stuff. One word, octopus. If you haven't seen it, it's really good. It's really well done. And again, it has a lot of the classic kind of whodunit, slashery, mystery elements. And it pays off. Everything pays off. Everything's great. Great film. Really well shot. Uh, and some great whodunit aspects that I really love. It's really high on my list from, from that standpoint. And it's, it's, again, not really mean-spirited. I mean, it's mean-spirited in the way people are being killed. That's kind of mean. But not in that like awful torture way, like you find it more in like like uh, Night Train and, and uh, Torso. That's a little more mean, a little more like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna do bad stuff to you. This is like, I gotta get rid of you because you're involved in something you shouldn't be involved in kind of thing. Um, far less gross. <laughs> So we're going to be covering more in the future. I hope the spoiler thing worked out. Again, visit the blog. Let me know what I'm doing. Do you like this? But visit the blog. Uh, let me know if I'm doing something right. Let me know if I'm doing something wrong. Is there something else I might be able to cover? Uh, we have a few more of these coming up. And I would like to know if, if it's working out, if it's not working out. Is it getting you interested in seeing some of these films from the historical aspect of Europe? If you're a modern slashery film guy, girl, you like those films, you were like looking to see some of the history of where these films might have come from, is it helping you at all? Let me know. I would like to know. Is it entertaining? And we'll be doing more. Uh, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I hope you enjoy the series. We're trying to keep you short, sweet, to the point. And let me know. All right. Thanks a lot. Almost Halloween.